In this video, we are going to be discussing the Turing Sky Shield ISP Configuration Guide, where we will cover all things you need to know about data plans, as well as the initial router configuration and setup. The first thing I want to show you is where you can find the configuration guide for your router. And if you go log into your partner portal and you click on Media, Libraries, Flyers, Videos, Guides, then you select the SkyShield. And when you scroll down to the SkyShield, you'll find the SkyShield ISP configuration guide. The SkyShield router configuration guide will work for both your SkyShield or SolarShield. The configuration guide is separated into two separate sections. First section is about the data plan and the data usage and the best practice for which data plan you should select. And the second is configuring your 4G router in the SkyShield. In the data plan section, it gives you an estimated amount of monthly data you will use based upon the number of events that you have. As an example, if you have 500 events per day, your monthly data usage is probably going to be about one and a half gigabytes. But if you have 10,000 events per day, then your estimated data plan is going to be 30 gigabytes. And you have to factor in the number of remote viewing hours per month. So say you have 500 events per day and 10 hours of remote viewing, that total is going to be 1.5 gigabytes of data plus 3.5 gigabytes of data, making it a five gigabyte data plan. In order to reduce data usage, it is important to set up regions of interest properly to reduce the event quantity. By default, it is full screen, so it is strongly recommended to adjust the area to cover the most important areas. On this page, these are the guidelines for adjusting the Vision Platform's region of interest area. The rest of the configuration guide is all about configuring your SkyShield or SolarShield's 4G router. And one of the very first steps you're going to have to do with your SkyShield or SolarShield is to remove the 4G router and uh, take it out so that you can see the back of it. The back of it is where you will find the serial number, the IMEI number, as well as the username and password, which is to, unique to each router. When you remove your RUT956 router from the SkyShield or SolarShield, you will want to take a note on the front, the main antenna and auxiliary antenna, as well as the default IP address. And on the back of the unit is where you will find the serial number, IMEI number, as well as the Wi-Fi SSID, username and password used to access your router. Please write this information down or save it as a picture for your reference later. The first step in configuring your router is actually to insert the SIM card. The SIM card does need to be a standard size SIM card, so you may need to use one of the adapters that comes with the router. Using the SIM card needle, you're going to place the SIM into SIM slot number one. This is a dual SIM card router so you can use a second SIM for a failover or data sharing. And you will need to make sure that you have connect the cellular antenna to the main and auxiliary antenna spot. If you have forgotten your router's password, you can use the reset button. And if you want to add, add a Wi-Fi antenna, you can add it here. Now let's take a quick look at all of the different connections and ports on your router. First, you do have four network ports, RS-485 serial connector, your power plug, an RS-232 serial connector, and there is an input-output interface connection. You do also have a cellular signal strength identifier. Now we're gonna focus a little bit more on the network connections for your router. The router has four ports. Port number four, by default, is set as a WAN port. So you're going to use port number four if you're connecting to an external network of some sort, a wireless access point, or if you have an external 3G router or modem that you're going to be using, you're going to connect it to port number four. It's important to note because if you are connecting to the router for the first time and you plug your computer into port number four, 
it's not going to be able to find the router in order to do configuration. Now, because this router is the same for the Sky Shield and Solar Shield, we're going to talk about the different connections that you'll be making with each independently. First, we're going to talk about the Sky Shield. Inside the Sky Shield, you're going to connect your switch or your bridge to port number one, and then your NVR to port number two. Now, there is also a smart power strip inside of the Sky Shield, and that RJ45 connector will be connected to an adapter and plugged into the RS485 port seen here. That is going to leave port number three and four available for any other peripheral type devices. Now we're going to talk about the Solar Shield network connections. So if you have a Solar Shield, you're going to use port number one and port number two for your two Edge Plus series cameras. And port number three is going to be used for the solar power controller. So there is a RJ45 network connection coming from the solar power controller that will be plugged into port number three. Now that we have reviewed all of the connections made for your solar shield and sky shield, it is time to log into the router. To log into the router, you're going to need to plug your computer into network port number one or two or three of the router and use the default username and password to access the router for the first time. To access your router's web interface, you're going to input the default IP address of the router into your URL bar, and then you will input the default username and password as seen on the router and click login. Logging in for the very first time, it is going to ask you to set a new password. So you will have to create your own unique complex password for the router. And click submit. After logging into the router for the first time, um, one of the very first things you do have to check is whether or not you're operating in a basic mode or in an advanced mode. So we do want to be in advanced mode to configure the router. We'll find uh, the mode basic and click on that and it will change to mode advanced. So now that we're in advanced mode, we click on the network menu and choose interfaces. From the interface list, we're going to find our SIM card slot number one and click the edit icon. From here, we're going to disable the auto APN and we're going to put in a custom APN. This custom APN can be referenced inside of the ISP configuration guide or you can see that information here on the screen now. This is a suggested APN that you could use, but you may have to use a different APN depending on the card that you've chosen or the ISP service provider that you've chosen. After you input your custom APN, you're going to want to save and apply those settings. One more thing that you're going to have to do for the best experience is to adjust the default MTU size for your NVR. What you'll need to do this is you're going to find the SIM card slot number one and at the end of the line you're going to click the edit button. I'm going to go to the advanced settings and I'm going to override the MTU size for the recommended number for your ISP service provider. So this can vary if you're using uh, Verizon versus AT&T. After you've changed the MTU size, you want to save and apply that setting. And now you need to reboot your router. So the final step in the process is rebooting your router. So you can either disconnect power from your router and reconnect it, or you can reboot your router by going back to the system and choosing Reboot. Once the router has rebooted, you do want to log back into your router and check the 
status of your connection. See and make sure that you do have a uh, signal. Uh, you do also want to make sure that you have your cellular antennas connected at this moment to see what kind of signal strength you are getting, uh, just to verify that you have all of the settings correctly. Here on the overview status page, I can see that I do have a signal, uh, signal and that I am connected.